Uh, so the kind of um, the description on the website is Mass Transit is a free, open source, lightweight messaging bus. Create a uh, create for creating distributed trans uh, distributed applications in .NET. So it's yeah, it doesn't really say much. Uh, but I like to think about it as the the web API for messaging, which I think is a better fit for it. So with like web API, we've got a web API client, which is our HTTP client, and we have our uh, post async uh, post as async methods with the uh, generic parameters, and then we have uh, read async of so generic parameters. So we don't actually really care about what is happening under the hood. And then we have API controls on the other side, which uh, also we just pass in a load of C sharp models into, and we don't really care what's between. <laughs> So we get a request in, a response back, and then there's some magic in between, and we don't really care what's there. And all that magic is HP listeners, routing, serialization, content negotiation, model binding, validation. Uh, and that's kind of how Web API works. So if you look at that from like a mass transit perspective, uh, we have our server and our uh, client at the side. Um, but our client does a bus.send of T and a bus.publish of T. So we don't really care about how, it, what, how it's communicating over the wire. And then our server just has an eye consumer of T. Uh, so it's kind of like very similar. You don't need to care about the underlying detail. And there's magic in between here. And that magic for this is actually to manage the connections to actual um, message brokers, uh, deal with all the route conventions of how it's going to route all these messages around the actual uh, message broker, and the serialization of the message. So you might be using BSON, JSON, or uh, anything else under the hood. And it deals with a lot of login and error handling. So if there's any error, error messages, what they get um, processed, they just get pushed onto error queues for you. And uh, this kind of is unpinned by uh, RabbitMQ, but also Azure Service Bus. And recently, they've started to introduce uh, ActiveMQ to support the um, more of a, the SaaS offering on AWS. Um, so this is kind of how our API controllers look. So we have our API controllers with the, the kind of uh, just the POCO objects from um, .NET. Uh, and then we turn back the same just objects. We don't really care about the JSON or anything else or the serialization, what's happening here. And the same thing was actually the HP client does exactly the same thing. So if you look at the kind of um, mass transit way of doing this, is you have the interfaces instead of actually actual classes. So we usually deal with like interfaces so you can do multiple inheritance. And then, um, then we have consumers. So this takes in an I consumer of I order requested. That passes it down into this uh, consume method. And then we can just deal with that message as just as if it was just a normal uh, interface. And we don't really care how it's passing this data across the wire. And then we can also publish like another message called I order accepted. And that's how we publish our messages. Uh, and we can also publish them directly. So we don't have to be in a consume context. Uh, so that's one of these things. Uh, and then also kind of just put, do a bus stop publishing. As long as you've got the bus running, as to say, you can just keep publishing messages onto the mass transit or push them onto a it's, um, a broker underneath it. Uh, so messaging, uh, mass transit provides a lot of abstract uh, kind of uh, stuff on top of the messaging platforms. Uh, so I was going to go through a few of these. So concurrency, so this allows us to uh, deal with like multiple things being read off the queue at the same time and processed in, uh, on these consumers. So we can either scale out kind of in partitions, or we can also scale out just by putting in more load actually running through this. Uh, so this is like uh, multiple threads. Uh, connection management, so if they, we do get a, a connection loss between uh, our application and our broker, uh, Mass Transit will deal with actually reconnecting it and continuing the process. Uh, exception for retries and poison messages, so if we ever get any exceptions uh, from kind of our computation and our kind of consumers, uh, it'll put it onto a kind of error queue, or also you can tell it to actually retry the message. So you might want to retry the message three times if there's like a transient error, maybe a, a database connection error. Uh, but also, if it still fails, we can push that into an error queue to deal with later. Uh, circuit breakers, rate limiting, and partitioning. So, circuit breakers is where you, if there's a, a load of errors coming in from like a certain service, we can just stop the traffic to that and then uh, filter them in slowly after that point. Rate limit is where you kind of like compress down the messages. So, you might have like a thousand all at once, but we wanted to like process them at ten at a time. We can rate limit that. And partition is where you start splitting the messages up based on some ID. So we can then like, um, <coughs> process them concurrently across a certain given partition. Uh, it also deals with serialization. So at the box, we have uh, XML, JSON, and BSON. Uh, the default is actually JSON, but you can actually write your own. Uh, for This is for actually publishing and uh, subscribing to them. 
And message headers and correlation. So when you're debugging kind of a message-based system, it's kind of hard to kind of correlate like messages uh, what are happening in one system to another system. And Mass Transit just kind of deals with all that for you by putting correlation uh, IDs on everything for you. So then you can trace the messages along the actual the processing. Uh, consumer life uh, cycle management. So this is kind of similar to how a uh, web API works. So you, if you've got an IOC container and you call like an action on the web API, uh, it'll actually create all your kind of stuff for you, what it needs to process. And then once it goes out of scope, it'll just destroy everything for you. And it's very similar for the actual consumer. So everything you need to be like uh, inject into your consumer, it'll build up. And afterwards, it'll call it dispose and everything and then clear everything up for you. Uh, routing topology, so this is kind of the big uh, winner here, I think. So uh, when you fire off these messages uh, into the Bliss onto Mass Transit, it actually wires up all the kind of routing inside of um, either RabbitMQ or your, uh, whatever broker you're using. Uh, so this means you're kind of like um, really abstract away from kind of how all these messages are flowing around the system. They just kind of work just magically. Uh, Sagas, so these are kind of long running um, tasks kind of what are coordinated by messages, so uh, like a state machine. So maybe you need things in certain states to be processed. Uh, so you might be waiting on like three different messages before processing a, di a different um, another process down the line. So this could be like uh, different hooks coming in saying like you've had an order accepted and that they've also just paid and now we can send them an email. So just long running state machines. Uh, scheduling comes out of the box. So the, this is actually built on top of uh, quartz.net. Uh, so we can say every Monday at 9 p.m. Uh, send, the, send this uh, given message and what it'll do is actually put that message onto a, another queue which is actually managed by Quartz.net and then it'll put it in its Quartz.net schedule and then fire that message back onto another actual system to actually be processed at a given time. So that's all the info on the slides. I'm just going to go a quick demo of it. Uh, so the demo is going to start with like a couple of console applications. These are all running in .NET Core. Uh, so we've got a shop, uh, payments, and a reporting. So these are little, little services just running inside a console app. Uh, the reporting one's got like an internal database to it, so you can, you can query it uh, for like um, how many orders have been taken and also what has been sold. In the middle, we've got a mass transit, and then, uh, which is actually uh, on RabbitMQ. And then we're going to build up some orders on our shop. And then we're going to submit a order requested uh, message onto the actual um, uh, mass transit. And then this uh, mass transit is going to like, uh, well, the payment service and the reporting system service are actually going to be subscribing to these messages. The I order uh, requested message, and they're going to then process what they need to process. Uh, once the payment's actually been successful, it's going to then uh, have an order accepted message come back onto the, uh, the bus. And then this is going to then fall back down to the reporting service so then can correlate how many orders have been processed to how many actually have just been submitted. Uh, but also, um, the payment might fail. So we've got a 1 in 10 chance in the code by a random number. So when an order request comes in, it might fail. And then we also send back a fault message. This is handled by Mass Transit. And then we're also going to handle the actual um, the, the consumer, which actually listens to the fault inside the shop. So they actually get displayed what's not being processed. Uh, so I'm just going to show you that. <clears throat> uh, so inside, can you ever see that? So inside this project, we've got um, a messages uh, library, which has the three messages. So we've got an I order accepted, an I order requested. And these just said it's got a list of products on them. So nothing fancy. Um, and then the product just looks like a, it's just a name and a price. <clears throat> uh, and then we've got our payments um, project, which is just a console app. It just has an entry point in uh, the CS project to start up like uh, the bus, which is using RabbitMQ, using some nice default passwords of guess guess. And then we're just going to tell it to receive everything on our, our endpoint called payments. And we want to use this one consumer called order requested consumer. And for our payments processing, we're just going to try to take the payment. And if it f succeeds, we're going to send another message onto the bus saying it's accepted. If not, we're going to throw an exception and just say the payment's failed. Um, 
for our reporting service, we've got two consumers in here. Uh, we've got an order accepted and an order requested consumer. So the order accepted one is just going to calculate some totals and put them into our uh, report store. So this is kind of acting like a database. Uh, exactly the same for the other consumer. Uh, so that's just uh, waiting for that message to come in of I already requested and then adding them totals together. This order, uh, report store is actually just an in-memory um, database to say and just deals with some concurrency issues. So you could be using any like database for that. It doesn't make any difference. And then from our shop perspective, we've got one consumer, and this is this fault consumer. So we've got a fault of our message. So this is the actual message what Mass Transit raises when actually it gets an exception back onto uh, uh, the consumer. Um, and then it just says yeah, how many items was in process. So if we run that, uh, before I run that, I just want to. So Doc wasn't working early, so hopefully it worked this time. Yep, works. So if you look at uh, RabbitMQ, or not, um, so this is the, the RabbitMQ. It's I've just it's got no storage behind it whatsoever. It's just in Docker, and I just like destroyed it and recreated it. Uh, so it's got no exchanges and no queues whatsoever. So if you boot up this, uh, all three of the actual console apps, uh, we have let me wait to start up. So over here, we've got our shop. Uh, and then we've got our payment processing in the right. And then we've got some reporting down in the left, uh, uh, right as well. Uh, and then if we just flip to RabbitMQ, we'll see that we've got our three queues. We've got our payments queue, a reports queue, and our shop queue. So this is what our uh, three console apps are listening on. And then we've also got a load of exchanges being built up from Mass Transit. So we've got a I order accepted and I order requested, and they're kind of bound to and more exchanges, which are then bound to actually the queues. So Mass Transit deals with all the routing topology for this uh, system without me kind of configuring anything. So if we flip back to these, uh, we should be able to order some things. So we'll order three lots of bread. And then we've got an order submitted. Uh, you'll see that payment's been taken successfully. And then if we look at our reports uh, app, we'll see that there's £3.60 being spent on bread. And the order requested is actually correlated to actually the order's actually taken. Uh, but if we go back over and uh, I don't know, order some milk and some rice and stuff, uh, whatever we want to order. Chocolate. Is they got some chocolate? <coughs> oh, I'll do chocolate next round. So we've got the payment successful again, and then <laughs> our reporting service will just continue kind of adding these prices up and kind of uh, correlating them back so we can actually display them. And then if we do this a couple of times, so if you do, you get some chocolate. Yeah, let's add a layer of chocolate. Uh, one payment should fail. It's got a one in ten chance. Should do. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's one in ten chances, not like six. Hey, we got an error. Um, so we've got our reports coming out, and then we could see that they don't correlate together because they're different amounts, uh, because uh, payment's not being taken. So we've got another request of that payment being taken, so we can see that nicely. And then over in our um, our shop, we'll also see that uh, the order wasn't processed successfully for the rice and the pasta. So that's all the magic in mass transit. Um, so that brings me on to the last slide, <coughs> which is so. Alternatives, there's quite a few alternatives, um, but I've played around with quite a few of these, and I think Mass Transit actually is one of the better ones. Uh, End Service Bus is quite a common one, but you have to pay for it for the service uh, um, support. There's Shuttle ESB, there's Brighter, which is fairly new, uh, there's Fubar Transportation, uh, Rebus. I've done some work on Rebus, uh, it's open source as well, uh, to do with Mongo, and Celery. So if you want to start looking to this stuff, there's quite a lot of stuff in this space. So just don't go out there and try to, well, one thing I, should, I think you should not consider is actually try to build it yourself. 
it's quite easy to like just throw through something together to actually communicate to Rabbit and actually pull messages off for yourself. But then having to deal with all the routing topology, once you've got like 10 services and you've got like 100 things subscribing to loads of different queues and exchanges and trying to build them all yourself, it just gets a headache because everybody's got a different way of doing it and then you've got all this big mess, spaghetti mess of kind of messaging. If you're trying to strict stick to one of the actual um, abstractions, it makes it a lot easier to deal with in the future. Uh, but that's it. Thanks uh, for listening.